Dreamers by Yuyi Morales. A New York Times bestseller. What if you dreamed of a new life and it came to you? What if that new life led you to a new country where no one spoke your language, where you felt alone and ignored? What have you had to make that new place your home? What if you found that home in a world of books? And what if it all were true? A Junior Library Guide Selection. Dreamers by Yuyi Morales. Neil Porter Books, Holiday House, New York. I dreamed of you, then you appeared. Together we became Amour, love, amour, resplendent life, you and I. One day we bundled gifts in our backpack and crossed a bridge outstretched like the universe. Adios, Corazon. And when we made it to the other side, thirsty, in awe, unable to go back. We became immigrants. Migrants, you and I, the sky and the land welcomed us in words unlike those of our ancestors. There were so many things we didn't know, unable to understand and afraid to speak. We made lots of mistakes. You and I became caminantes. Thousands and thousands of steps we took around this land until the day we found a place we had never seen before. Suspicious, improbable. Unbelievable, surprising. Unimaginable. Where we didn't need to speak, we only needed to trust. And we did. Books became our language. Books became our home. Books became our lives. We learned to read. To speak, to write, and to make our voices heard. Someday we will become something we haven't even yet imagined. But right now, we are stories. We are two languages. We are lucha. We are resilience. We are hope. We are dreamers, sonadores of the world. We are love, amor, love. My story. All of us have stories. Each of them is different. This story began in 1994 when I crossed a bridge with my two-month-old son, Kelly, from Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, to El Paso, Texas. And though I did not know it at the time, to a new life in a strange and unfamiliar place, the United States of America. Once here, I was surprised by the quietness of the streets the houses neatly lined up along the roads, and later by the cold winds of San Francisco Bay in the summer. I had come so that my son could meet his great-grandfather Ernie, who was very ill and not expected to live much longer, and to marry Kelly's father, a U.S. citizen. I wanted to return to Mexico soon afterward, but was shocked to learn that because of U.S. immigration rules, 
and my new status as a permanent resident, I was now expected to remain in the United States. I had become an immigrant. But could I possibly call this new place my home? Like most immigrants, I missed things that felt familiar. My family, the food, my friends, my job as a swimming coach, and my ability to communicate, to understand and be understood. In this new place where I did not speak the language, it was as if no one seemed to notice I existed, as if my words and actions didn't count. In those first days, I constantly wondered if I would ever find a place where I felt valued. Then one day, Kelly's grandmother brought us to a building that would change our lives forever. We discovered the public library, and it was spectacular. I had never been in a place where you could just take books from the shelves without asking and without being scolded for taking them. And there were picture books, something I had not encountered before. I could not believe how beautiful and sturdy they were. And then when I opened them, I was amazed at the power of their illustrations. Even though I could understand very few of the words, I realized that I could understand the story. Through those images, a realization that would come to inspire me later on. I began bringing Kelly there almost every day. And although at first it was difficult for a little baby to stay longer than a few minutes, eventually we were able to spend entire afternoons looking at picture books, often only leaving when we were told the library was closing. We were at home. During those years, as Kelly got older, librarians at the Western Edition branch, Richmond branch, Presidio branch, Mission branch, and the San Francisco Main Library on Larkin Street, among many others, guided Kelly and me to find books we could love, though in an English that I struggled to understand. One day, when Kelly was not yet two years old, Nancy Jackson, the children's librarian at Western Edition Branch, handed him his very own library card. I was in awe. We could now take home a stroller brimming with books. One of the most important things I learned at the library is that though books, through books we could find our path and our purpose. I also learned that I love to tell stories and that I could tell them through books. I studied the books I admired so much and became determined to make my own. My first efforts were very simple and very crude, made by hand and bound with ribbons and filled with my own stories and drawings. I was so proud of those books. Kelly was not a dreamer in the way the word is used today to refer to young, undocumented immigrants who were brought to the United States as children and who have lived and gone to school here and know no other country than this one as their own. Kelly and I were dreamers in the sense that all immigrants, regardless of our status, are dreamers. We enter a new country carried by hopes and dreams and carrying our own special gifts to build a better life, a better future. Dreamers and dreamers of the world, Magrentes Sonaros, now I have told you my story. What's yours? Yu Yi. Books that inspired me and still do. To dreamers of all kinds, especially those who have brought their abundant gifts to a new land, you are the inspiration for this book. How I made this book. I painted with acrylics 
and drew on paper with ink and brushes and a nib pen that once belonged to Maurice Sendek, given to me by Lynn Caponera. To give the book life, I photographed and scanned many things, including the floor of my studio, the kamal where I grill my quesadillas, my childhood drawings kept by my mother, a chair, a brick from my house, old walls from the streets of Malanco, my hometown of Zalapa, and my house, a metal sheet, traditional Mexican fabrics, crepe craft and ame papers, leaves and plants from my garden, an old woven blouse, hand-painted pants I made for my son Kelly, old wood, water in a bucket, jute twine, a traditional wool skirt from Chabab, Kelly's childhood drawings, my first handmade book, embroidery, and more. Born and raised in Mexico, Yuya Morales immigrated to the United States with her son Kelly in 1994. At the time, she barely spoke any English. Since then, she has written and or illustrated many distinctive books for children, including five that won the prestigious Pro Bella Award, Just a Minute, A Trickster Tale and Counting Book, Los Gatos, Black on Halloween, Just in Case, A Trickster Tale and Spanish Alphabet Book, Nino Wrestles the World, and Viva Frida, which also received a Calcutt Honor.